Hey t here's this is Don from May Leaf. In this video, we're gonna dive into some Lao Cha To May Leaf style. For those of you who don't know what Lao Cha To is, when you have cooked pua or ripe pua, if you don't know what that is, I'll put a link in the description below so you can find out about ripe pua. But during the wet piling process, during that fermentation phase, which usually takes about two months of the fresh tea into that lovely, rich, dark colored tea, during that fermentation process, some of the wet pile clumps up and it clumps up into these little nuggets. And those little nuggets clump up at the bottom of the pile. And then when the pile is turned, because they, they have to turn the pile quite regularly, those clumps come to the surface. And they basically are clumps of tea which have just been stuck together either with tea, extra tea juice, just sort of holding it together, the oils and the juice from the leaves holding it together. Or some people say that there's extra mycelium activity. So extra sort of strands of mycelium during the fermentation process, which bonds it together. I don't know what's true. My suspicion is it's more likely just simply to do with, with compression and the sort of stickiness of those tea oils, just stick them together. And so you get these little nuggets here. And they are, you know, considered to be very high quality shupua, although you get varying grades, obviously the actual quality of the starting material, the quality of the fermentation process is much more of a factor in this, but they are certainly sought after and they definitely have a different taste to them. And the taste is very interesting because on the one hand, they start off quite light and very easy drinking because of the fact that they're sort of essentially these nuggets, you have much lower surface area of extraction. And so the brew is actually lighter to begin with. But because of the fact that the fermentation of these um, nuggets have uh, happened where the leaves are all tangled together, you have less oxygen within that clump of leaves and therefore you're probably going to get more fermentation inside. So on the one hand, it's light to start off with, but on the other hand, they have a lot of longevity. They go for a very long period of time. And that's what I want to do today. I want to brew this up, taste it, but also see how many infusions I can get out of it. So we're going to crank up the temperature of this kettle and we're going to weigh out some tea, I've got a small guy one here, it's a 70 mil guy one. Normally you'd be doing something in the region of five grams of tea per 100 mil of water because this is 70 mil. I would therefore be doing something in the region of three and a half grams, but I'm gonna crank it up to five grams for this one. So just increasing the amount of leaf because of the fact that it is in these clumps and sometimes you get big clumps like this and therefore like if I threw that in that's a full sort of five grammar I would normally just break it a little bit um, now we're going to talk about breaking a little bit later so that's 5.5 I think that, that should be good yeah that should be good that should be good you know I'm always a bit greedy um, let's quickly scope this tea actually before I put this away get this kettle off so I can hear myself think Okay, so let's scope this tea. This is uh, spring 2010. So it's a 2010 cooked pua. It was picked and processed in 2010. The uh, cultivar is the Dahlia John variety, the generic sort of name that we give to all of this bigger leaf uh, varieties in Yunnan province. The origin is from Bulang, Bulang area in Yunnan in China the picking and processing is buds. You can see some sort of uh, the lighter, uh, more copper colored. Those are buds and small leaves. So very sort of small leaf and, and fine buds, but more leaf material. The elevation is about 1,200 meters. The color, you can see lovely sort of carob, sort of dark chestnut browns, mahogany brown color with like, you know, nice, actually multiple tones going on. You've got some oranges, some reds, some paler, more sort of matte gray gunmetal sort of colors. It's an interesting sort of uh, combination of colors. Very, very mottled, very, very sort of, it's not the best looking tea in the world. You pull this out, especially when it's brewing, doesn't look particularly good. You know what I'm thinking. It just sort of looks a bit, mm, not very pretty, but don't let that put you off. Very, very lovely tea. Now what we've done with this Lao Chato is we have given it 
a very gentle London roast. But I'm talking very, very light, very, very gentle, low heat. It's more about accentuating and uh, building richness in the tea rather than adding too many roasted notes to it. We did trial some very, very roasted tea, but we've uh, gone for a very light roast on this, a very light London roast on it. I love roasted ripe teas. Um, Boulain Brittle uh, was releasing it and it, it got such a great reaction from, from, uh, from everybody out there that, you know, we, we agree with everybody out there that it really does add something else to the tea. But as I said, this is more about building richness rather than adding too much of a roasted flavor. Um, so it still stays true to the Lao Cha To taste. And the Lao Cha To taste is, is interesting because it's, it's, it's very, very easy drinking. Now you'll understand why I have so many cups because what I'm gonna be doing is brewing each infusion. See, one of these perfectly fits this cup. It's like the ultimate set. If you wanted to get yourself the most streamlined Gong Fu uh, set possible, just get yourself one of these, which are very, very affordable and get a couple of these cups. Um, and you can, you know, just literally, this is what I do when I'm doing tasting. Small guy one, brew, I don't have anything else, just drink from there. And if you are seeing and criticizing me for having chipped cups, the reason for that is because when I go to the warehouse, all of the, any, uh, goods which are chipped or damaged, I'll take back to my place and use. So we don't waste it. It's a perfectly good cup. Um, but um, I'm, uh, I'm, I don't like throwing away useful cups like that. I mean, it's still fine uh, to to drink from. Now, take a look at the color difference in here. Right, you can see darker and lighter. So you're gonna. There's a lot of variation in the fermentation and in the. Uh, the shape and fermentation of Lao Cha To. And that's something that you need to sort of accept because of the fact that these have been clumped up. You're not going to get this sort of even surface area for fermentation. So you get a bit of a difference. And as I was saying, Lao Cha To, what's interesting about Lao Cha To is it's very sweet. It's very um, easy drinking. It tends to be one that, you know, people can just dive straight into because it's a little bit lighter at the beginning, but it has incredible longevity. And we're gonna see that hopefully with this video. I forgot to do smell of dry leaf. I'm racing ahead. So let me just try and um, breathe a bit of my warm air in there just to warm it up. Don't worry, it'll all be me drinking it. Yeah, so uh, what's interesting about Lao Cha To is I actually think that the, the dry leaf or the dry clump, the dry nugget smell is sort of a bit funky. It's got a funk to it, which is why some people say maybe it's got a bit more mycelium. Now it doesn't have any wet stored fishy, none, none of that. No wet stored aroma at all. But the smell is sort of like got malt, a little bit of sort of saltiness to it. A little bit of a sea air, not fishy, not seaweedy, but just salty. Um, in, in China, they talk about um, egg yolk smell or sort of salted egg yolks. And it has that sort of got a salty, rich, creamy, malty note to it. Yeah, and, and, and it's got, because of the, the bake, it's got a little bit of a toasted, tiny bit of a toasted note, but more like sort of toasted rice cakes. So let's have a smell of these wet leaves here you can see the color has as i said sort of a, an uneven mottling of color and that's not because of uneven roasting that is how it comes okay now wow a bit of camphor a bit of cardamom a bit of chinese herbs so you're getting all of those very um danky lovely um spicy notes but it's also very, very creamy as well. I'm getting things like fudge, vanilla. Um, so the malt is transferred into that. I'm getting a little bit of dried prunes in there. And there's a creaminess out as well. And that creaminess really reminds me of cheesecake, like a, a, a so those salted duck yolk, duck eggs, those yolky, that kind of a creamy note on the dry has turned into sort of like a, a cheesecake with a bit of like um, blueberries. And then you've got prunes and spicy notes. It's just 
a very, very engaging, complicated, complex, but all delicious notes. Now, I really want this temperature to be super high. It was an 85 now. I want it to be very, very high because of the fact that it's low surface area, because it's in those clumps, and it's gonna require a lot of work to sort of extract um, anyway, you want hot, hot water with Lao Chao Toh. Don't brew cool, in my opinion. You can experiment, do whatever you'd like, but I would not advise you to brew cool. Poor little mouse. I forgot here, I tend to forget my tea pets when I'm speaking in front of the camera, but I'm sure he'll get some rinse. I'll tell you what, I'll put him in here, waiting patiently for, for his or her brew. Okay, let's do this. So what I'm gonna do, I'll taste the first one with you, and then I'm gonna brew up a few infusions. Now, as I say, boiling hot water, not frightened of direct brewing, just pouring it straight on these, and we're gonna leave it about 25 seconds, something like that. And you'll see how light this tea is compared to sort of loose leaf. In fact, what I'll do, just so that you can see. See that? That almost looked like the rinse, right? But it's not the rinse. That's your first 25 or so second infusion, but lighter. And Lao Chato also seems to have a little more of a sort of pinkish, um, reddish pinkish, orangey, but like more peachy, pinkish hue to it. Really, really love the color. I do love the color of Lao Chao Tau. So there you go. That is the color of the first infusion. Let's give this a taste. Texture is light to medium, but it will thicken. And this is why I'm doing um, it this way, I want to show you the progression through the infusions. So at the beginning, it's gonna be very light. So don't let that sort of freak you out. Like, oh, this is a very light tea. It has so much longevity to it, this tea. The taste, sweet, some woods, some, some, some spicy vanilla pods and woods, that woody, um, woody note. No, like rock sugar. Um, it reminds me of if you have a very, very shiny, dark chocolate, you know, the, the chocolate which is used mostly to, to um, how can I explain it? Like cooking chocolate, very, very uh, shiny, very well-tempered, very dark chocolate. Not the cocoa note, but the sweetness that's associated with it. It's almost like got um, a slight um, fermented, quality to it, the sweetness. The, the roast is very, very gentle. You can hardly taste it. In fact, I'm pretty sure that if I didn't tell you that it had been uh, baked, you would not have guessed. You may figure it out, but certainly once you've tasted it and you know it's been baked, then you, know, you can sort of pick up that extra little bit of creamy, um, biscuity, note to it, but nothing toasted to it. Right, so that was number one. We're gonna do two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna brew them all and we'll come back and take a look because I need to get my stopwatch on for this one. All right, so that's brew number six. So what I did was second infusion. I actually dipped the time a bit lower. So similar to what you would do with maybe ball roll doolongs, the first infusion, because it's also tightly clumped up the leaves. You just wanna brew it for a bit longer. Then you can reduce it down to about 15 seconds. And then I added five seconds each for each infusion. And you can see <clears throat> the liquor color is pretty much identical across the board. So that's two, three, four, five, six infusions. Let's, um, and you can see the leaves here are pretty much exactly the same, right? I'm gonna confuse myself here, aren't I? So two, three, four, five, six. You can see the leaf is pretty much identical and they are pretty dense, right? Pretty dense. They're gonna to start to open up a little bit, but they still have a lot of density to them. And so you can see they're gonna they're gonna take a while to open up. All right, let's give these a taste. Number two. 
already a lot thicker. So medium to thick now. Delicious, so sweet. Sugars just come to the fore like candies, like uh, boiled sweets, boiled candies, hard candies. And the sweetness has a slight cooling nature, like a minty sweetness to it. Um, yeah, like uh, I want to I want to say like mint candies, but not that mint, but with a slight maybe like a cough sweet that has a slight menthol note to it. But there's also this creaminess there from the, the cheesecake. It's turned into it's turned into like a I get a bit of sherbet. It's just as an aside, a little bit of sherbet, but um, like um, a cream cheese frosting like on a carrot cake you know if it's like a really good cream cheese frosting with a little bit of icing sugar in there it's just such an easy drinking uh, tea it doesn't have the same cavernous quality that a lot of ripe pu'ers have so if you're looking for a ripe pu'er that has that intense wet cave um, taste then this is probably not the the tea to choose, but it's super easy drinking. It's sweet. It's got a little bit of that cellar note to it, but more of like a fruit cellar, like um, like if you're storing uh, apples in a fruit cellar. I mean, that's just talk, we're talking about great grandmothers now. I, mean, I don't know who does that anymore, but if you were, like imagine, it's not wine cellar so much, but more like a fruit cellar. Infusion number for again flavor profile persists a little bit of blueberry coming in again so that sort of blueberry topping on the uh, cheesecake fresh blueberries uh, cream cheese frosting i'm still getting a little bit of cardamom a little bit of uh, camphor a little bit of the, not so much chinese herbs it doesn't have that sort of cavernous quality or that spicy angelica a tiny bit, but not really much of that spicy Chinese herbal quality to it. Mm. Uh, number five. Same richness, same depth. Again, uber sweet. Very, very sweet. And it's not a hui gan sweetness. It's not a returning sweetness from bitterness. It's tian. It's direct. It's a direct sweet taste in your mouth. But it persists. Mm. What else am I getting? A little bit of stewed fruits. Um, you know, prunes that are very, very hard. Not those soft uh, sort of argan prunes, but a little bit harder, more dried fruits, um, which are then sort of like stewed. Mm. Cherries, that's what it is, dried cherries not sour cherries dried dark cherries mm. i'll tell you what i'm going to do and i'm going to pour all of these in here and then we'll move on to infusion seven to eleven all right here we go so this is uh seven till eleven Again, check out the color on these. I mean, really very, very little difference. So I'm still adding like three seconds for every infusion. So, you know, we, we're brewing fairly long time, but again, I keep on messing up my cup orientation, but I've got to show you, look at that. I mean, really, they're still pretty, they're, they're just, this, you can feel that they're opening, but it's still pretty, uh, brittle in there. It's still nowhere near open. So this is 7 to 11. Taste through them. That little mouse is patient, patiently waiting, but still, um, this is still for me, mousy. Mm. A little bit of um, sort of a apple skin freshness coming through a little bit more, but again, rock sugars, hard candies, blueberries, little bit of mintiness, a little bit of spice, and mm, mm, what is that? It'll come to me. Ah, um, not licorice, not licorice, but something dark and and sweet. I just, I have imagery of like dark, black sort of um, 
hard candies for some reason with a sort of minty a slight creaminess to them like mint humbugs but but very very deep and there's something else there like a woody sweetness is it like uh, maybe it's an, an antique wood woody sweetness um like the smell of mahogany or the smell of rosewood is coming through again the flavor difference on this is barely uh, perceptible Mm. that one's hot oh that was hot just freshly brewed that one so needs to cool down a bit very very similar flavor profile all of those good notes sweet so sweet and easy drinking right now we're up to brew number 11 you can keep going uh, you can also boil this tea so you could definitely boil this tea um, and it will make a really lovely brew but what i like to do and it's frowned upon by by some i do like to open these up um, because i find that you're going to impact a little bit in terms of texture although i like those of you who watch me know that i like a, a bit of quench and dryness see see what i mean like, look at that how that's different to that that clearly shows under fermentation compared to this one right so it's just i think i don't think it's true to say that all lao cha to is more fermented or less fermented but certainly there is more unevenness and i've tasted we have tasted a lot of lao cha to and you know it can be a little bit hit and miss depends as i said on the quality of the wet pile and the quality of the starting material let me just clean myself up very very sticky wow very very sticky and that's uh, interesting because it shows you that it's probably a lot to do with these sticky leaf juices that that holds it together or at least at the moment that clearly feels like the case i'm going to give a little bit to this mouse just simply because i feel sorry for him right now we've still got 100 degree water and i'm going to brew up now i'm going to reduce the brewing time back down to about 30 or 40 seconds something like that now as i said lao cha to some people i mean i think that the common opinion is don't break up your lao, lao cha to but you know i have experimented with it and i find when you get to sort of infusion 12 to 14 it just sort of adds like this little twist into your session where you can just flip it and go right i want to go stronger and sweeter and as i said it will impact texture a little bit so you may find that it's a little bit more uh drying on the tongue but that doesn't really bother me much at all so let me do one infusion and then i'm going to roll through more infusions just to see how much we can get out of it so that was probably about 40 seconds i'm going through a filter now because of the fact that there will be inevitably more of this happening right because it's no longer nuggets so sorry now it's coming out right you can see it looks darker than brew number 11. let's give it a taste mm. Mm. um um so definitely drier definitely you've got more puckering and more uh, not puckering so much because that feels like it's from the sides definitely dry, laying down more dryness on the tongue so if you want an uber smooth tea then don't do this and i understand the reason why people say don't break up the uh the lao cha to but the flavor change is so interesting more of that creaminess comes out more of that cream cheese frosting that cheesecake note definitely it definitely has more of a um, sort of a custody custody note to it mm. it's sort of like having a egg custard but you add just a little sprinkling so a sweet egg custard but you're adding just a sprinkling of salt to it just somehow it's got a little bit of a um a saline not umami just sort of saline note to it which i really like and some people may not like it but i really like it and i certainly don't like it from the beginning so if you take up lao chato and you break it up 
it's too intense. But after you've gone through these infusions, uh, infusion 12 or so, just experiment with breaking it up. Adds a funk to it, which is so, so nice and engaging. And that mintiness is still there. And I'm still getting that sugary, hard candy note. Mm. Let's have a smell of this empty cup before we move through infusions 13 to 17. It's starting to become a bit, bit odd, but here we go. Yeah, it's there in the cup. Let's see. Different. Right. So this is more sweet, um, creamy and sweet, but the creaminess is like a sort of milky sweetness um, with some dark baked twill biscuits. And this one is just like egg custard tart with salted pastry. So sort of so, like imagine an egg custard tart with a, a, a sweet pastry, but then with that addition of salt, like a digestive biscuit, if you're um, if you know those in the UK, like digest. So it's like a cheesecake. You know how you get that sort of graham cracker digestive biscuit base. Oh, much more intense, much richer. Right, I'm gonna keep brewing. Let's see how many we can get out of this tea. Brew number 17, and as you can see, this tea ain't given up. Um, and actually, because I broke it up, it's infusing faster. So you could probably get even more infusions if you left it as, uh, as nuggets and let the nuggets open up naturally slowly. But look at this, I mean, it's just, it just keeps on going. Um, so this is uh, 13 to 17. Let's give it a taste. Um, ooh, okay, like a little bit toffee, toffee. Yeah, like very old school toffee. Um, a little bit of And brightness, I can't quite put my, I'm gonna say sherbet still, but it's something different to that. Yeah, I'm moving all the way to the end because still very, very nice, still bags of flavor going on. It's not giving in. And you can see the color here. This is like brews, whatever, the first sort of six brews or seven brews, and you can compare it to Compare it to these brews and you'll see that they're pretty much the same color. It's just an amazing tea how long it lasts. Mm. That sweetness is like a, the, the mouth finish is very, very sweet. Icing sugar sweet. And that sherbet-y, it's not sherbet. I'm still trying to work it out. Yeah, it's blueberry. It's this blueberry skin. You know, when you have uh, blueberries and, and you just, the skin has a slight um, acidity to it. Just that, that's what it is. Finally, it was bugging me. So 17, should we keep going? I'll quickly run through the rest and we'll, we'll, we'll try and get to the end of how many infusions this Lao Chateau will give you. Infusion 18 to 22. Still going. Okay, this is infusion number 25 and I think I'm calling it, it still has color. And we are doing like three minute infusions or potentially more. I've sort of given up timing it, but long, long infusions. You can see this infusion, now we're starting to get into quite a light color. So, very sweet, not much flavor, but just very sweet water, I could just keep infusing it and just having it as sort of sweet, almost like um, sweet river water, you know, very, very sweet water, but it doesn't have the same oomph and impact and flavor as obviously these ones you can see here, I've been drinking along the way, feeling it a bit. So I can definitely give you a pretty accurate body sensation on this. Body sensation is nothing that's gonna get you tea drunk, but nice, happy, warming, uplifting, gentle energy buzz, really, really lovely. You could drink this any time of day. You know, the takeaway from this is Lao Chateau. If you get a good one, 
It's very important you get a good one because uh, it can, as I say, have a, a, a bit of a funk to it. But if you get a good one, then it is super easy drinking any time of day, sweet rock sugars, cheesecakes, blueberries, what's not to like. Um, so definitely one for maybe introducing someone into shocha. Certainly is, is one of my go-tos whenever somebody hasn't tried it before because you know they're just gonna have a very, very um, easy drinking. And I'm not saying that in any disparaging way just sort of easy drinking, delicious, sweet tea. I, since we've had this in, I have been drinking this as a very, very regular staple. And that little roast that we put on it, I think, just adds even more richness to it. Um, Lao Cha To, definitely worth checking out if you like Shu Cha, and definitely worth checking out if you want to experience uh, Shu Cha for the first time. There you go, little nuggets of joy. Not the prettiest tea out there, but certainly a delicious one. That's it, tea heads. Check out our other videos. Taste our teas wherever you are in the world by browsing mayleaf.com and come visit us if you're ever in London. Other than that, I'm Don from Mayleaf. Thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from those tea bags. Keep drinking the good stuff and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea. Bye.